I got a hilarious story for you. <laughs> so the state, or rather the city, let's say that, is suing. The uh, city of Seattle is going to be suing basically car manufacturers and companies and Kia and Hyundai because there's uh, an increase in vehicle deaths. Now, I tell you that, and that sounds absolutely crazy, but I'm not even joking. There was a p press release, and I'm going to read it right here. News, news.seattle.gov, right? And this happened two days before I'm recording this video. Seattle City Attorney files lawsuit against Kia and Hyundai to abate public safety hazard created by exponential rise in theft of their vehicles. So they're suing them. And Seattle's a crap hole, right? Um, it certainly continues to be one. It grows. It gets even more of a large of a crap hole. On Monday, City Attorney Ann Davidson filed a lawsuit in federal court against car manufacturers for their failure to install anti-theft technology in some of their vehicles, which has contributed to an exponential increase of, of Kia. Uh, so, so there's been an increase of theft, and the city of Seattle says it's your fault. They're aware of public safety uh, concerns rising from the huge spike of theft of vehicles. They have not taken any meaningful steps to address the problem. That's insane. So the thefts rose or increased by 363% and 503% in Seattle. In July 2023 alone, the Seattle Department reported a 620% increase in reports of the stolen vehicles over the previous July. And they're saying, this is what the city attorney, Ann Davidson, chose to, uh, that, that both companies chose to cut corners and cut costs at the expense of their customers and the public. As a result, our police force has had to tackle a huge rise in vehicle theft and related problems with already stretched resources. Now Seattle taxpayers must shoulder the burden of the increase in theft. This is kind of weird how the state is, 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 is like, that's the angle that they're taking. Like you're having acts of aggression or these customers these uh, uh, citizens are having acts of aggression that are placed upon them by way of a violation of their private property being stolen and deprived from them. But it's their fault. And it's not at all, let's say, culpable or not at all uh, to credit. Is the state itself in the crap hole that they have facilitated and attracted. And the argument that they're making here is that they're not doing enough to basically, I guess, have the technology, right, to prevent the theft. Now, let that sink in. The state's blaming you, the city. You know, when I use the state, I'm using it as a territorial monopoly on use of force, violence, and ultimate decision makers. So city government, state government, federal government, they're all states in the context of how um, I use that. And they're trying to recover the damages. But this is my argument here. I don't care how you feel about the car manufacturers. This is what I say. Look, I'm all for companies and, and, and citizenry being able to be responsible and taking, taking um, let's say, the responsibility of protection of themselves and their property uh, in their own hands, more private hands. But this is the thing regarding the state, right? The state has monopolized that in itself. And what I mean by that is they have they, they have the the right to ultimate decision making they like to think. It's not a right at all. Um this is what the state is. Use of uh territorial, you know, it's tied to, so the use of violence, monopolization of violence and ultimate decision making is what this is. So they make the ultimate decisions to make the rules whether it be being as lenient on acts of private property and aggression uh, when it comes to actually apprehending these criminals, whether it be uh, uh, not allowing the people to take it in their own hands. So you've monopolized it. This is what's happening right now. You've monopolized the service service. I use that term loosely of fighting this, this said crime. And then because uh, you have these acts of aggressions being committed, 
you are now blaming the private citizenry who you tied behind, had their hands tied behind their back. So you need someone to blame other than yourselves. The state is, and they're going to blame the car manufacturers. That's really the, 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 the line of thinking here. It's just ab absolutely silly. Now I made this argument back in the summer of love. 2020. People started breaking folks and breaking in people's uh, businesses and all that stuff. You had one instance where, the, what is it in Minnesota where a man took the protection in his own hands of his own property and blasted one of these looters up out of his business and they arrested him for murder. So the state should be looking at laws that prevent people, including car manufacturers even for that matter, prevent people from being able to take this stuff in their own. You've monopolized it. So when they take it in their own hands, you you punish them for it. Seattle's a big offender of this. Right? These problems, I'm not going to act like there's going to be nobody doing theft, especially something like that, or even other forms of violence. I'm not going to suggest that people are doing that, or, or like they'll just completely stop. But I do believe that the state incentivizes people to participate in such bad behavior through their policy and monopolization of, again, violence, use of force, ultimate kind of uh, uh, decision making. And if those laws were either gotten rid of and they were, let's say, encouraged to be able to protect themselves, I believe that citizenry would come up with their own creative ways to do so. But you have to allow them to respond. And that's not what they want. They're called the Wild West, they'll say. This is how evil the state is. Imagine that. They, in terms of what they've monopolized, they can't keep things under, under tabs, right? Under wraps, let's say that. And then they're going to say that it's your fault. <laughs> Wherever you're viewing the content, I appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, you may be interested in my comic book company, Riververse Comics. Our first book and campaign, I Sum Number One, brought in $3.7 million with tens of thousands of satisfied customers. Visit Riververse.com to check out our store and stay up to date with the latest campaigns from one of the hottest new comic book companies. Also, my first big step towards a parallel economy was the development of my personal website, EricDJuly.com. This entirely replaced my Patreon. Now, if you enjoy this content, please consider becoming a member over at the website. We have an ever-expanding list of perks for various membership tiers, a forum, and a phone app. Some of these perks will even benefit you if you're fans of the Ripperverse. Anyway, I appreciate you so much for being a supporter and or customer. I even got a little love for my haters. <laughs>